like to take some time to answer some of your questions. If you have them, and I'll moderate and try to go in an order in which they are asked. Do you have any questions? Um, I have um, a question about, well, I know Dan Tinadata talked about um, implementing these uh, tools within companies, and then um, can you talk more about public sector? So I was wondering about uh, moving from um, implementations within corporations, within our organizations, and actually moving that to company customer bases, um, and I guess how can we make this transition? Okay. Can you repeat the question first and answer it, please? Sure. Thank you. Right, right. So, and and correct me if I'm wrong. So, the idea is you can use tools like these internally and externally, and how do you go from an internal use to really spreading that to your vendors and suppliers (coughs) and and customers? Is that, did I encapsulate that? there's there's uh, really no reason that you can't even start there. I mean, a lot of companies that, that use prediction markets um, start internally because they want to understand it, they want to sort of get it operationalized. And then, like, a GE uh, has started to go out to, like, GE Healthcare has gone out to their doctors to say, hey, we build medical devices, and we'd like to better understand, you know, we think we know what you guys want to buy, but we'd like to get some input, in, input from you as well as suppliers out there to say, hey, you know, come tell us what we should be working on, tell us what's important. So with tools like this, the benefit is, is they're, uh, they're web-based and, and that you can give access to the world or a subset of, of that population. So there's really no, I would say, challenge other than incentives. And, and that's one of the questions that I wanted to talk to you all about because the whole fuel, in my opinion, that's driving these things are now, what do I get for doing this? I mean, right now, absent of these tools, um, you know, you're not getting the benefit of this crowdsourcing, people coming telling you what they know, type of thing. So you want to give people a reason to do that. And, and, and there's a lot of, you know, we've talked about tangible things, intangible things. It's a lot easier, we found, to motivate a company because you could, you could have the CEO say, you know, you're strongly encouraged to do this. I mean, we haven't had anyone get fired for not participating or, or doing poorly, but we have had people advance their careers, move up in the company, and things like that. So it's, it's, it's a lot easier to get an internal sort of crowd rallying around, hey, we should, you know, we should do this. It's harder to also take that same mechanism and say, hey, let's now go outside the company, because what are you going to motivate them with? A lot of times we've seen is, well, you get by you guys participating, you get the benefit of this data. So we're setting up this sort of, you know, industry-wide thing for banks, you know, and we kind of run it, and every bank that's involved gets the benefit of what other banks, you know, think as well, so that you can sort of, you know, manage risk across, you know, the industry. So it's, it's sometimes the incentive is more of a data sharing. Hey, we'll tell you what we know because you're telling us what you know, and we can all sort of collectively get smarter. At least at a high level. Um, you know, I, I think the problem is, uh, you know, there's a built in uh, bias towards kind of a stasis environment, right, or a stasis environment, because, you know, none of us really likes change tremendously, some of us more than others, some not at all, right, because we have to redefine our roles and so on. So, you know, the, the best way to effectuate change is to uh, show results. And if you can show results, then that starts to get everyone's attention referred. Like if you can show sales, if you can measure something you can measure, right? And share a little, kind of the second part of that, a little story about us. Now, we're a social networking company. You know, not social you know, networking, but enterprise networking, what's called. And I, I kind of, just a little experience with that. Are you familiar with micro-messaging? Obviously, Twitter's micro-messaging, right? Okay. So, I, as I go from time to time, got a short conviction, you know, idea and so on. And I came in on Monday morning. I said, guys, ladies and gentlemen, for parent board, uh, guess what I did over the weekend? I set up an enterprise micro-messaging. So now, as an organization, we're going to talk to each other all day long. Okay? If, so it's a, you know, it's like a Twitter 
but it's on your desktop, but it's just within your organization. So it's only within your domain. So everybody in Neighborhood America, whether it was sales or technical or administrative or operation or financial or whatever it was, we were all chronicling our day, including me. Okay. Now, to the extent I could, telling other downloaders what I did, I do like four or five days a day or six or seven, right? Oh my gosh. You'd have thought that, you know, it was the hardest thing we have ever done, was to become a flat, relatively flat organization where anybody could talk to the CEO, and the CEO could talk to anybody in the company, and everybody in between could talk to each other and ask everybody else questions outside the line of authority. But I will say this, once we did that, it was not comfortable again. Boy, I, I didn't even remotely begin to appreciate how difficult that was going to be. I mean, I, it was a blind spot, and that one just went too much. But you know what? More than any other one thing, that experience helped everybody in the company understand what networking is all about. And they could go out and describe it, and sell it, and develop to it, and talk about it. And all of a sudden, people were talking to each other that they didn't even know they were in the organization together, you know, and we knew about each other's, you know, just, I mean, so, anyway, to, you know, it's hard to, hard to enact it if you don't use it. Yeah. The other thing I'd say is that a lot of the famous failures in social media almost all trace the roots back to the employee not being knowledgeable how to behave in the social network. And it's usually not the customer service rep. It's the CEO. So if you look at um, <laughs> somebody like Motion Moms or the Kryptonite fiasco, those are all head up problems. Do have one more suggestion for you. It's something we've seen both internally in organizations trying to do uh, crowdsourcing or social networking as well as externally. If you need to have some champions, and they're naturally going to happen, but the quicker they happen, the more you have followers. Um, and you know, a lot of what we see in our network is there is the one percent out there that everybody wants to do. And uh, when you make that phenomenon happen your social network now becomes viral. Uh, you can do that internally, but you're going to have the pains that Kim just talked about, you know, in a large organization particularly, but it is worth it in the long run. Externally, it is easier. Anybody else? Let's say I'm a big brand and I want to try predictive marketing or, or, or uh, to set up one or to do something in the neighborhood space. This is evolving very quickly, but have you gotten to the point yet where I should know, I mean, I know what it's going to roughly cost me if I'm doing direct mail. What is it going to cost against a certain segment? What is it cost, what, will it, what are the parameters on cost in terms of dollars, time, human resources to institute this project? Uh, I'll just throw out that um, it depends. It's sort of, uh, you, you, you got to put a value on information. So if, if, um, if, if you want to predict something or get inputs to a decision and it currently costs you uh, $30 million to do that, like for example, the, the, there's an uh, a, a organization that we work in, the Defense Department, that, that tests weapon systems. And it's a very expensive process. And they say, hey, if we can reduce this test amount from X uh, amount of time to Y, then we would we would we would know that uh, you know that would be huge you know huge number. So um, you always want to compare it to say uh, uh, another you know, way of, of doing it. So another you know, surveys or, or other types of things. But um, uh, so I don't know if that. So it's situational depending on your customer and are you, are you pricing these for how are you pricing and what's the pushback or tolerance and are you doing value sharing we, or we typically uh, do a hosted solution that we charge on a monthly basis depending on the level of service and, and the amount of utilization. 